There we go. Awesome. I'll let you take it away whenever you're ready. All right. So, uh, hello, I'm Chris, and welcome to the uh, Crystal Vision team. We are comprised of Cameron, me, Shivani, Jaden, Barini, Winston, and Arnav. And we created an AI that can detect a crystal and tell you what kind of crystal a rock or geode is after you take a picture of it. And for a quick demonstration, let's say, for example, you found an interesting rock that you want to know what it is. You just take a picture and upload it here. And it'll tell you what it is and how confident it is. Oh my God, this, this is a project my son would definitely want to use. He, he's a five-year-old. He constantly pick up rocks. And yeah, this, okay. is, this is the, yeah. All right. Uh, Arnav is going to give you a purpose and summary. So we created this project to help geologists classify crystals and rocks easily. Nearly all of us have had to do that tedious lab at school where you're given some information about rocks and you could classify them based on properties like luster, streak, and fracture. But by using computer vision to recognize crystals efficiently, we are able to provide a significantly faster method of crystal classification for professionals, as well as amateurs and students exploring the field. Uh, so here's a quick summary. In brief, we spent the first week learning about the basics and labeling. We then worked on processing the data during the second week, and we spent this past week focused on delivery of our product and making sure it was also functional and yet visually appealing. Our greatest challenge was the long and arduous process for selecting a topic that was appealing to all of the members of our group. And over the past three weeks, we quickly learned the value of utilizing documentation on the internet to work faster. Our project currently identifies nine types of crystals, and we hope to add more crystals in the future to make it more useful. Data collection and label box. After we had finally chosen an idea, we then had to collect data and label it. We first started off by downloading many images of nine different crystal types. Quartz, rose quartz, amethyst, garnet, celestine, turquoise, pyrite, corundum, and malachite. Then we looked through the different images we downloaded and deleted all the ones that didn't apply. After collecting all the data, we inputted all the data into label box and labeled them based on the type of crystal. Our main goal was to find the best data possible, which meant we tried our best by labeling images that are as high resolution as possible in order for our model to be accurate. Finally, after two days of labeling data, we moved it all into a JSON file ready for the data processing. As a team, so this is the main summary of the second week. Um, so as a team together, we gathered data by downloading hundreds of images of each crystal and then sorting through to delete any anomalies. Next, we labeled the data in label box. We had to work to take the labeled images to transform them into data that the neural network could interpret. We did this by splitting up into three teams and two people to accomplish each part. The first team downloaded the labeled images to organize them. The second team analyzed the data and formatted it into the proper format for YOLO. And the third team split the data into training sets and, te and test sets. Neural networks and YOLO at a high level. The neural networks contain three more important layers. These include the input layer, the hidden layers, and the output layer. Between these layers, there are weights, which are how strong the connection is between each network. And there are thresholds as well. When an input to an artificial neuron is greater than its threshold, the neuron fires and gives information to the next neuron. Yellow uses convolutional neural networks to recognize the object in the image. Convolutional neural networks read an image pixel by pixel. The algorithm will take a pixel of an image and put it through different filters and give an output. The yellow algorithm uses residuals, which divides the pictures into tiny boxes, then bounding a box regression, 
which boxes the object, and, uh, and finally, intersection over union. IOU finds the difference between YOLO's box and the labeled box. This allows YOLO to become more accurate. Let's talk about the different challenges our team faced and how we overcame them. Our first challenge was learning Python. Although nearly all of us had coding experience, it was often a struggle now and then learning it so quickly in a short amount of time. In order to apply our learning, we practiced with some challenge problems, which often proved to be difficult. But after some practice, we got better at the language. When it came to coding for AI, we often faced tons of syntax errors, mistakes, and failures. Although they were often frustrating and challenging, we got through everything uh, to work by persevering. For our team, coming up with our project idea was actually the hardest part. All of us had different ideas on what to detect using computer vision, and we had well over 25 different ideas at that point. We had over four rounds of voting with over 15 ideas in each. Here are some that we couldn't decide between. Detecting different constellations, identifying different foods and their nutrition, and detecting different crystals. Finally, after many rounds of voting, we narrowed it down to our final idea. Here are our final thoughts and a thank you. So my final thoughts are that I thought it was extremely fun to learn about how the computers are actually able to detect things. And I also found it interesting to learn about how the Discord bots work. And I'm excited to be able to use these for more projects in the future. All right, so um, I thought this uh, project overall experience was very interesting because I learned a lot how to code Python and how AI works. And I thought this was a very fun project overall, learning new stuff. And I really enjoyed making the Discord bots because that was really cool. I loved working with my group and designing the website with them was so fun. I learned so much in this camp and loved the experience. I learned a lot through the hands-on part of camp, and I thought overall AI camp was a great experience for me. Uh, my favorite part was the application of our idea and how we brought it to life, which was truly unforgettable. And I also really loved learning about tech and also working with our group. Uh, I really liked working together. And it was also fun to work on something that I really care about because I like earth and space science. And now if I lose a label on a rock collection it won't like cripple it forever and i also really enjoyed making like a i went through a short tutorial on tensorflow one day with cameron's help which was pretty fun uh, thank you for listening wait no no one's talking about the part where thank you cameron <laughs> it was just like Sorry. robots like like Thank you, Cameron. <laughs> That's just so funny. It was meant to be a surprise, but we forgot to like hide it the first time when we were like doing a dry run, so you already saw it. Yeah. Well, you know you're gonna thank him. <laughs> okay, the... thank you. Cameron. That was actually my slide. I slipped it in there while they were looking. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so funny. <laughs> yeah, can I, I have a question. What is the Discord bot? Uh, when we had a little bit of downtime while some of our mods were training, uh, I walked them through like how to create a Discord bot. I walked them through how they could use it to like deploy models and how they could use it to just in general create and do something that's actually applicable. So thought it was an awesome project to learn something about Python while also using time productively. Because like I said, we had just a bit of downtime while one of our models was training. You had a downtime during AI camp? That, that's pretty amazing. That's pretty amazing. Can we just clap for the downtime? Like, thank you guys. <laughs>